And I'm going to show you a great example how fear mongering could have made you miss a great move in silver back in the 2000s, right before there was a market crash. We're setting a bit of a historic precedent here. Was it really that event that caused the rally to go up? The economy is going to start suffering pain. That's the Welcome back to another episode of Talking Trades with myself, Kevin Wadsworth, and my partner there, Patrick Karim. Okay, when you hear terrible headlines about market crashes, when you hear about panic, when you hear people talking about the S&P dropping by 50% or precious metals going into a, a plunge, what do you do? How do you, how do you deal with that? How do you uh, tackle that? Where's the evidence? Are you just listening to fear-mongering? What's the difference between fear-mongering and evidence? Patrick, can you help us out with this? Yes, thanks, Kevin. Look, there's always, I, I call that the paralysis analysis or fear. You're like the deer in the headlights, right? It's like you have an investment for whatever reason you're in. And then one day CNBC decides to start mentioning that, whoa, possible recession, incoming recession, yield, uh, yield curve uninverts. This has led to a recession 95% of the time. And then you're, you're, you hear that that fear mongering type of clickbait uh, headline. And then you say, well, oh, the economy is going to crash then my, my stock's going to crash then I have to bail. But then after that, then you see the price of your instrument keeps rocketing upwards. Then you jump back in, but then when you jump back in, it was actually starting to roll over and because the news was starting to get uh, good about uh, the economy, but then there's a recession. Look, all that guys, whoo, noise, 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 noise. There's a plethora of, emotional driven, uh, you know, algorithms out there. And I think it's the prob they're probably out there to generate these yin and yangs of your emotions, right? But if you're a chart trader, you have to be mathematical. You have to be ruthless. You have to be precise. You have to look at the evidence. When I entered this trade, this was my premise. The price was breaking out above an inclining moving average. My, my basic uh, trading premise is I will exit when that price closes below a certain moving average. That's my trading framework. And no matter what news I hear, if that wasn't part of my trading framework, like as a chart trader, news it has nothing to do with chart trading, objective chart trading, then you should you dismiss it. You want to talk about possible recessions at the coffee table with your in-laws and getting arguments? Go for it. Have fun. But that is separate than what's actually happening on the price chart. Because I'm going to show you a great example of what how fear mongering could have made you miss a great move in silver back in the 2000s, right before there was a market crash. And that's pretty much all that will be to it. So let me just get my share screen up. All right, guys. So what do I have here? I have silver daily chart log scale. And I have right here, January 8th was the start of the Great Recession. What does that mean, the start of Great Recession? Well, it was a start of an officially declared recession, right? This in hindsight, these recessions are often uh, backfilled in hindsight, right? They revise the GDP, they revise the jobless claims. And then we could be halfway through a recession. They say, oh yeah, by the way, the recession didn't start where like right now we've analyzed the data and the recession started actually two, three, four months ago, right? And then you got to understand how do instruments, price instruments also react into the recessions, right? It's not always like this, but the market guys is smart. The aggregate of market participants, they, they price in the possibilities of an economic downturn, the, the possibilities of recession. They'll price it in ahead of time. Here's silver. And I'm going to go back to you on as how this should have been played as a trader, but I'm just going to showcase to you what actually happened in the 2008 great, the, financial crisis. Leading up to it, in um, September of 2007, silver was actually going up, up, up into the recession. So the recession, and it was backfilled that we were in a recession right here, but did that stop the silver price from going up? No, it went up 44% after the start of the official recession. Then after that, it went sideways, and then it formed a top, and then it broke down. Look what happened when it broke down. It was below that moving average, that 96-day moving average. It plummeted. Practically halfway through the recession is when silver bottomed. This is when the news is the worst there. It's like uh, economic, uh, whatever. Everything's the worst at that moment. But silver started going up way before the recession officially ended, right? So market participants, they priced in 
the recovery of the recession ahead of time, right? And then once silver exited here, we know in two, after 2009-10, that's when silver went up in a parabolic melt-up all the way to those 2011 highs, like close to $50. So the market participants, but it, it's not always like that, guys. But a lot of the times, the markets, the, the metals will front run the end of a possible recession. So, and through all this uptrend, there, there was probably a plethora of good news, but maybe even more bad news. On the way down, the news must have been terrible, or sometimes you even have good news, but the price still starts going down, et cetera. So all that, those news events, which drains your emotional capital because you're trying to rationalize why is the price not tracking the, the narrative. Just look at the price, guys, because this, this I want to finish up by showing you as a trader. Here, I had a beautiful slightly descending trend line, price coiling around that 96-day moving average. I had a clean, clean breakout right here. For me as a trader, it's a breakout. If my premise is I'm hanging on to this until I close back below that same moving average, then I'm going to stick. So you would have rolled silver all the way up here from $12 all the way up here, even when the recession started, and then the price went all the way up here, and I could have still hang on to it. And then I would have started exiting right down here when I started closing below that um, 96 day moving average, but I would have still ran. I would have had a great run from there to there, or I could have waited for the whole top pattern to morph into existence from there all the way to there when I have a full breakdown. So that's as a trader, I don't care about the news. I rode that even amidst a recession or a possible recession or bearish news, I rode that, right? And after that, I would have recovered. Here's a nice base coiling around that 96 day moving average. There's an early breakout line here, but after that, it started trending upwards and I would have tried to ride that up, guys. So when you see that, whatever's happening today, right now, I know the yield curve is starting to uninvert. Uh, there's a possible recession uh, happening. But look, if the silver price is right now above an inclining one-year moving average, above a th inclining three-year moving average, then you're, you're in an uptrend. You could scare yourself out of the trade. You could say, well, uh, I think there's going to be a recession. It's going to dump. I'm going to exit. Well, you could always zoom in on the smaller time frames. And if it does start rolling over, then of course you could exit, no? But if the price is still carving out higher highs and higher lows, then you're in an uptrend. So instead of you trying to always second guess what the aggregate of market participants are doing, just ride the wave until the, the, the market tells you, look, the momentum's done, you're breaking down, then you bail irrelevant of all any fear mongering type of headline news. Yeah, well said, Patrick. That's uh, you know absolutely crucial you know point to to understand that is that we've been hearing for a long time, I suppose, about the stock markets potentially rolling over, breaking down. Look, the stock market, as you said, you know, like with silver, it's above rising moving averages. The chart itself has done nothing yet to tell us that anything disastrous is coming. It's a difference between a roadmap and reality reality has to be respected you, you can have a roadmap and reality just carries on doing something completely different so it's not your roadmap that is is real your roadmap just shows what you have assessed is the most likely scenario but just because it's the most likely scenario <laughs> doesn't mean that a, a scenario that's only got a 10 percent chance of occurring that can happen you know even something with a one percent chance of happening can occur so respecting Price action as it unfolds is, is crucial. And exactly what you said there, um, there's no need to, to panic until something materially breaks down. Listen, Pat, fantastic stuff there. If you like this, uh, like, share, subscribe for, for more content and uh, join us again for the next Talking Trades. Bye-bye for now.